Hey, Racer Magazine and Racer.com fans, Robin Miller, our Sunday night feature. Thanks for checking in. As you can see, no natural light. It's Indiana. It's cold. It's dark. But we got these wonderful lights and some good pictures. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about one of the all-time greats. Not a guy from the 50s or 60s or 70s. Somebody that's current. Somebody that just retired last night. Well, he didn't really retire, but his full-time his full -time career came to an end, and that would be our pal Steve Kinzer. Uh, when the World of Outlaws came along, this man became the face of the World of Outlaws, along with Sammy Swindell and Doug Wolfgang. But the first time I met Steve Kinzer in, in the uh, late 70s, here he is with his dad, Bob, who's a hell of a short track driver, and his brother, Randy. Steve wasn't sure if he was going to be like his dad or not, have a full-time job during the week and just run Bloomington, Paragon, Kokomo on the weekends, be a weekend warrior. He wasn't sure. And then along came Ted Johnson of the World of Outlaws, and life changed for Mr. Kinzer. Steve, Sammy Swindell, Doug Wolfgang became the three faces of the World of Outlaws. They went down the road 100 times a year. Wing sprint car racing became one of the most popular things to watch in the 80s and 90s. It was because of those three guys. I think it would be wrong just to box Steve. I mean, think about this. He won 20 World of Outlaws championships, 577 features. God knows how many laps he led. In 1987, he won 46 of the 103 races they had, including 12 in a row. I mean, I'm not sure those kind of records are ever going to be topped again, but the thing about Steve was it wasn't just about wing sprint cars. Uh, good example, 1981, Eldora, the first time USAC had the Four Crown Championship. Steve had a World of Outlaws commitment, so he, but he had a sprint car and a Silver Crown ride, so Joe Saldana qualified the car for him. He started next to last in the Silver Crown race, won it. Started... Uh, 19th out of 22 in the sprint car race, he won it. And those are the days of Poncho Carter, Gary Bettenhausen, Larry Dixon, Sheldon Kinzer, Tom Bigelow, uh, Steve Chassis, Larry Rice. I mean, a hell of a field. And to come from the back, he didn't have any. He didn't have much practice. He certainly didn't have a lot of experience in those cars. That showed you right there what kind of versatility the guy had. And then along came, comes the IROC series. They invite him. He wins to Talladega. He goes to Talladega and wins the IROC race in 1994. Kenny Bernstein hires him to run his, a stock car for him in NASCAR in 1995. Well, that was a disaster. Bernstein's team was terrible. They fired Steve after five races. Best thing ever happened to him. He was going nowhere fast there, and uh, they didn't give him much to drive. But two years later, along comes the Indy Racing League. Probably the only really good thing that came out of the Indy Racing League, Steve Kinzer and Jack Hewitt got to make the Indy 500. After he made Indy, I said, you know, Kinzer, you ought to give up the World of Outlaws for a couple years and just go run Indy cars full time. They, you'd be a big draw. And he goes, why the hell would I do that? I can't take the pay cut. And I'm sure he's telling the truth there because he made a lot, a lot of money. But the thing that's amazing to me is, is that he went up and down the highway a hundred times a year all through his 50s. He was still winning races and still being competitive in an environment that's so tough. I mean, think about 36 consecutive years of driving sprint cars. That's what he did. And uh, I, I don't know that you'll, did he compare with Troy Ruttman and and Bubby Jones and Jan Opperman and Poncho Carter and, and A.J. Foyt and Mario Andretti and Pernelli Jones. Hell yes. Kinzer could have probably made it in any era, and he was as good as anybody that probably ever drove a sprint car. Uh, hard slicky, big cushion, short track, bull ring, big place, didn't matter. He was that good. But my favorite Steve Kinzer story when I sign off is this. Him and Carl Kinzer, who was the master mechanic, and they won so many races together, they had just won the first Kings Royal at Eldora. They won $50,000. Earl Baldus paid them in cash. They had it in a shoebox. So they're towing their sprint car back from Rossburg, Ohio to Bloomington, Indiana. And Steve said they kept pulling over in rest areas with a flashlight, putting it on the $50,000, going, Can you believe we got $50,000 for winning a sprint car race? Because I'm sure he would have been just like his dad and been happy racing for a ham sandwich and a beer every week at Paragon or Putnamville. But guess what? He made a hell of a career out of driving sprint cars. He's a hell of a good guy. Wish him a lot of success. We haven't seen the last time. He says he's probably going to. You know, he'll pick and choose, might run Knoxville, might run Eldora again, never see, never know. He's done as a full-time driver, but I can tell you this, he was a badass with a capital B-A-D-A-S-S, -S, and believe me, I'm glad I got to watch him race for the last 37 years, and I'm glad I got to call him a friend. This is a salute to you, Steve Kinzer. Thanks for entertaining us all these years, buddy.